Welcome back to the lab, folks. Today we're going to concentrate on uh, this. This is our uh, pimped up Highland type power supply that we went through. I think we did four or five videos on it. I'll put a link to the playlist if you're interested in having a look. And I've had this in use since the last video and it's it's been a, a good little power supply. Uh, I'd say it's a, a very good little power supply. It's been doing what it's supposed to do for me almost on a daily basis. So I'm, yeah, I'm really impressed with it. But there's a couple of things uh, preventing it from being a great power supply. And uh, let me take you through those. So one of them is uh, this. You hear that noise? It doesn't sound like much right now, but I can assure you when you're sitting in a small room trying to concentrate on something, that noise being there all the time, it tends to be a little bit bothersome. And another thing is the display. Now, while I quite like the display, it's got some viewing angle issues. Like if you're looking down on it at all, as you can see there, the thing, you start looking down on it, you can't see the digits at all. So you have to be kind of looking up at it before the contrast is right. And there's no way to adjust that contrast on it. So to remedy those situations, I have a couple of solutions. And if you go back a couple of videos or so, uh, I did a, a comparison on three of these panel meters and this was one of them here. That's one you can set some limits on it. Uh, you can do some minor adjustment of the calibration, although it was pretty good to begin with. And it's got four digits instead of three. Uh, so I'm going to install this in it. And the star of the show, let me just turn this off right now, move this out of the way. The star of the show, comes from PCBWay, and PCBWay are the sponsor of this video. So I've got to shout out a thanks to them. They made these boards up for me. And if you go back again two or three videos ago, you'll see where I designed this board. What it is, is it is a programmable fan controller. So it controls the speed of the fan based on the temperature. And you can program to do it in any way you want. In my uh, example code I'm going to put on here today, and I can update that any time. In fact, I have some ideas about what I want to do. Oh, they sent me some stickers here. That's, I guess that's why the reason for the big box, the stickers. Sometimes I like to send out stickers. So yeah, I set it up uh, initially just to, to give me four different levels of speed. So it comes on around about 35 degrees, and then at 45 degrees it pops up the next level. And then it's 55 and 65. At 65 degrees, it goes full out. And I did it that way to easily identify the points at which it changes over. Because what I basically had to do is I, I used this board here with a thermistor and uh, a mug full of hot water and this fan here to kind of calibrate that so that I could, I could get a good calibration on the thermistor itself. But what I'll probably do is I'll probably rewrite the program uh, shortly to make it continuous. It was for, for reasons of, of calibrating the whole system that I chose the four particular speeds at four different temperatures. But anyway, I'll put up a screenshot of that code right now. You can have a look at that. And let's proceed on. Let's have a look at these, uh, these boards here. I'm sure they're well manufactured as usual. I've never, ever had a problem. And they're quite small, it's quite compact. And the reason I did it like this is, is to retrofit into things like our pimped up power supply there. So yeah, there we go. There's the back of the board, which is basically just a, a ground plane. And all the traces, the very few that there are, are up here on the front. All right, so uh, what we're gonna do is we've gotta build one of these up. And I think I'm going to, um, I'm gonna simplify things for myself somewhat. And what I'm going to do here, let's take the top off this, is I'm, you've got this blank space right here. And rather than completely dismantle this whole thing, I'm just going to build one of these up and stick it on here with some double-sided tape right onto here close to the fan. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount the thermistor underneath this screw. I'm going to drill a hole here and bring the cable down because I, I only put in two screws to the fan because that's plenty enough to hold this in place. So this hole here is wide open. I can bring in the thermistor 
through that hole and connect it up to the controller. Let's get started on this. The first thing to do, of course, would be to assemble one of these boards. So let me get some parts and uh, we can get that assembly done. together. Now I just like to test it out and you get 24 volts on a fan and a thermistor. Alright here we are. Is there a little test set up here? It's going to go through a quick test. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up the thermistor with my soldering iron. I've got the fan here plugged in and we're going to listen to it. It should come up to speed very rapidly because this is going to heat this up very quickly. And I'm going to put the microphone down near the fan so we can hear it, see if it uh, goes through its four different steps, or some of them anyway. Well, that seems to have worked out very well, indeed. The next thing to do now is be to mount it up in here and test it out and uh, see how well it works in this environment. Now, I'm probably going to have to pop this uh, casing off this connector to get the wires through. But uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's arrange for all of that and then we'll come back. All right, so we've got uh, all the wires in place here. This goes to the fan. This comes from the power. This comes from the thermistor and you can see the thermistor is up here it's mounted the same bolt that holds the pass device in it's got a little bit of heat sink compound underneath it and it comes over here to this hole passes through the other fan hole and comes out on the inside now the question for me is is it easier to hook these up after it's been stuck on or plug them all in and try to wrestle it in place I think I'm going to I think I'm going to stick it in there first and hook it up later. I can take a different view on things here. See if I can get it in as straight as possible. Space is at a premium inside this unit. You see what's going on there? Okay, so I can easy enough get that chip out if I want to reprogram it. And that should hold things in there very solidly. All right, now, here's the fan. It's on here. Power goes in here. And the thermistor goes in there. Okay, it's all wired up. Time for a, a test. I'll do that before I put this meter in here. Just test to make sure this fan is working right. 
So I'm going to set it up for a hefty load. So what we're going to do is we're going to run one volt at two and a half amps. And what that will do is it will it will cause the pass transistor to have to participate the maximum amount of power. And that should warm it up quickly. And we'll see how the van performs. But the most important thing is, when we first turn it on, that we don't have a big loud fan wailing. Okay, here we go. It turns on and the fan is not turning. All right. Looks like we're at 1.35 volts. So we're going to set up the voltage to one volt. All right. Put the current up to max and get it hooked up to the load over here. All right, we've got the load set up for two and a half amps. One volt, that's fine. And uh, we're going to turn on the load right now. So we're delivering uh, approximately 2.3 watts into the load, but the power supply itself is having to dissipate probably close to about 40 watts. And it is getting warm. we go. I think that's the lowest speed. I think it just went up to the next higher speed. We brought the load down to half an amp and let's uh, let's turn the voltage up to 10 volts. Okay, so the fan is able to shut down at this point. So it never got beyond uh, the first speed. So that's good. I mean, it is, it is an awfully big heat sink, so one might expect that. But at least there's reserve in there in case I'm uh, truly abusing the thing. Okay, so the next uh, part of this upgrade process would be to get this meter in. So you can see what I'm doing. So I just push the the meter out, and I'm going to disconnect it. Now this one should theoretically pop right in its place. Okay, these ears come up rather aggressively. Uh, unlike these ones here, which came up fairly nicely near the end. So this is causing a bit of a problem. I'm going to have to maybe uh, file this back a little bit here. All right, let's see what we got going on here now. There we go. It's in place. I just got to hook it up. Let's come over there. There we go. Lots of room now. And this one. Let it go in. Yeah. Ah. This wire's on the wrong side of that bundle there, so that bundle has to come out. Oh, what a tangled web we weave. Okay. Yes. Here we go. Okay. Enough wire there for everything. Let's get the power hooked up, make sure it's off. Okay, now we're ready to turn this on. Let's see how it looks okay so it looks like we have a threshold that's uh being crossed and i think we set the low voltage on the video that we did these meters that we set the low voltage to 13 volts or something like that so we have to go in 
and uh, change that threshold down to zero and the upper threshold to 20. Okay, so it's got to be set down to zero. And this one's going to be set up to 20. Now current, we want to set that up to 2.5 amps. There we go. All right, let's check the voltage. I'm going to be able to see that. This curved surface on this meter makes it so difficult to, to work with with overhead lights. See, I'll prop it up on there. You can see it. All right. See if we have to adjust the calibration on this meter at all. 9.60 says 9.813. So we do have to adjust the calibration. Well, let's go back in. And we can't adjust the lower digits. We can only adjust the tenth of a volt. So that's pretty good for me. I'm okay with that. And we just hammer through these. And there we go. So I think that's a lot more legible. It, uh, it actually looks great. Bigger characters and four digits. This is now a nice, quiet, very readable power supply. So it's gone, come from being a pretty good power supply to being a great power supply because all the other functions seem to work very well. But now those two things that uh, were bothering me a little bit have been taken care of. I'm just going to blow some dust out of this thing and we're all done. And as they say, dusted once I dust it. All right, folks. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, just one more thanks to PCB Way who made it possible by supplying these uh, parts for me, these boards. And uh, I'd like to thank you guys for coming on out and joining the video for the day. And I'd like to also thank a, a, a bunch of people who've been uh, using my AliExpress affiliate link and buying things and I make a little bit of money with that. So I'd like to you know, show my appreciation for those folks too. Thank you very much. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.